so beautiful You broke my heart at 16 The first I felt my world come crashing Like magic, like your heart was made of matches I've never got over it I swear your friends know when I post your photographs It doesn't really hurt, but it always takes me back to sick Okay, I moved my thing right as I started filming Not what I meant to do Hi guys, um... My name is Kayla, and obviously this is the channel Kayla's Advice. If you've never been here before, this is probably a horrible video for you to be starting out on. But, hi, um, I'm welcome, I welcome you, I welcome anybody, um, everybody's welcome on my channel. I do talk about hard things, relationships, bullying, etc, etc. Um... As you know, if you've been here before, I said I was going to make a video for every single relationship, which was nine. We are coming to the end, which is kind of bittersweet, and I am on the eighth relationship, Apricot. So we are getting very close to the end. This is going to be a two-part series. Um, so this is just going to be the story, and then the receipts will be the second part. Uh, just letting you know, because... This is a wild ride, and you're not going to understand because I still don't understand half of the stuff that happened. So, bear with me. Um, oh wait, this is three parts, my bad, because I need to give the advice. Whoops, forgot about that. <laughs> um, so, wow, that's what my whole channel is about, and I forgot. You can see what kind of person I am. I'm a great person, I promise. So, um, I will start off with the story. Like Philip DeFranco, let's jump into it. <laughs> it okay. Like Philip DeFranco saying that. Right I there. forgot to put the day I started dating him. Whoops, I will add that in there. Um, anyway, so. Um, so I had it was after my breakup with Satan, Cupcake. So I was like really upset and everything, but I was at this point I was kind of like over it. I had like, you know, done my healing, got my chakras in place, whatever. And it was all good. Um, so I was actually going to hang out with one of my friends, uh friend Brayden from the last relationship video that I became friends with. I liked him and I'm gonna say right now, I don't know why I did. I think it was just a rebound type of situation. I think so Because I don't think that I actually liked him. No. So this was the only day my eyeliner looked good that I did it. Like usually it looked bad. So I was going to hang out with him and that day we were just hanging out at our hangout place, The Hut. And so it's like this little old trolley stop place. We call it The Hut. So we were hanging out there, really and, and so basically we were, it is good though, no one cares. Um, so we were hanging out there, and then Cupcake pulls up on his bike. And he had said to us, he was like, well, he addressed me, he was like, hey Kayla, how are you? And I said, I'm fine, and he was like, that's good, I'm good. And right as he saw Apricot coming out of 7-Eleven, his eyes got wide and he sped away on his bike up the trail. So, I feel like I was kind of being selfish at this point because I was like, oh, I want this Apricot guy around more because he scares Cupcake. And that's why I wanted Apricot around at first. Just to scare Cupcake away. And... But whatever. I was just, like, triggered by Cupcake. Like, he gave me panic attacks. He doesn't do that anymore now that I've, like, fully gotten over everything. But whatever. So, I want him around. And so, he started making jokes. And we started, like, laughing and having a good time, you know, making friends or whatever. And this is what I mean by Brayden introduced me to everyone. Brayden introduced me and he's like, this is Apricot. Apricot, Kayla, Kayla, Apricot. You know how that works. And I was like, nice to meet you. And he was like, nice to meet you too. And apparently there was a moment where we looked at each other that Brayden said he could tell that we fell for each other in that exact moment. Like the way we both looked at each other. <laughs> so I was like, whatever. So we were hanging out and I liked him that same day we were hanging out. And I told Brayden when he went ahead to do something, I was like, hey, Brayden, I kind of like him. Can you, like, you know, like, give me the deets. Like, give me the tea on this person. 
And he had said, oh, well, he's taken, so I wouldn't really, like, go down that road. And I was like, no, I totally respect that. If he's taken, that's fine. I'll just stick with being his friend, whatever. Like, that's good enough for me. So then I ha really had to pee. And I was like, okay, there's, like, got to be a place nearby, but I don't want to go in a 7-Eleven. I don't want to go in a gas station. And we were, like, on the way near my church. I don't know how we walked out that far, but we did. And apricot's like well there's a gas station that's gonna have to do and i'm like okay but one of you boys is walking in there with me i'm not going in there alone so brayden walked in with me and the guy who worked behind the counter was like watching me really creepily but he didn't do anything creepy and that's not what this video is about anyway so then brayden went back out because um apricot had texted him to come back out because he wanted to talk about something so when i'm in the bathroom this is the conversation they had. Sorry. So, bless you. Thank you. So, the conversation they had when I was in the bathroom, Apricot was like, oh, she's really cute. She's hot. Like, I want her to be mine, but, like, you know, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. And Brayden said, like, they had told me this after the fact. And Brayden was like, but I like her. And Apricot's like, oh, you were friends with her first. But I still want a chance to, like, get her. So Apricot and Brayden made the decision that whoever made their move first would get to date me. They didn't tell me about it. They, they just shook on it. And I came out of the bathroom and they acted like nothing happened. So I was really, really cold. And Apricot had a North Face jacket on. And I was really, really cold. And I was, like, freezing, even though I had a sweater. And he was like, here, you can take my jacket and just give it back to me. And I was like, okay. So he gave me his jacket. And then he hugged me goodbye because he had to leave. And he's like, every time I say goodbye to you, I'm going to hug you. And that still stands to this day. So he, like, hugged me goodbye. And that was, like, our thing. But, of course, he had been smoking cigarettes. So then my hair started to smell like cigarette smoke. And I had to hop in the shower. So this is, I met him on a Saturday and then, um, that Monday he was like, Hey, I want you to come with me and my friends and we are going to, I don't want this to get anybody in trouble. So we are going to go to a special place and do something that may or may not be illegal depending on where you live. So, um, I was like, Oh, well I have rehearsal for Greece at Ford and he's like we'll just wait for your rehearsal to be over and we'll take you from there and we'll go do the thing and I was like okay cool and I was gonna do it with them until I thought like I was having really bad uh, emotional problems and my friend in theater I'm just gonna say his name because like he's my friend my friend in theater Lucas told me if I don't okay. feel right then I shouldn't do it so I texted Apricot and I was like hey I don't feel right about doing this but is okay is it okay if I still like come and he's like sure like we still want you there we're all friends with you so at first from my rehearsal we walked to his house to drop off our stuff because we were like we don't need our stuff for where we're going because that's gonna be like too much so then we went to this place that we call the shrine and that's where they were doing it and it was kind of cold and they're like don't do it in her direction because her dad's gonna get mad at her for something she didn't even do like i said which may or may not be illegal depending on where you live you probably know what it is i just don't want to say it out loud to get people in trouble so that's what they were doing we were just kind of sitting there well then he got really cold and he gets cold really easily so he asked me if I could sit on his lap because he was cold and I was like yeah sure so like he wrapped his arms around my waist to like get warmer quicker so he was doing that and then just um there were only four of us and just him me and uh Brayden walked back to his house and this is an inside joke, and I'm going to say it because it's hilarious, and you're probably not going to understand, but it's fine. Brayden was so stoned off his ass that he put his arms out and did this, and he said, I'm a bird, and started, like, doing this and, like, being a bird, and Apricot and I were dying of laughter. So 
he we were watching a show that's only funny if you're stoned obviously i didn't think it was funny but apricot was high and brayden was stoned so i found it hilarious and apricot asked if i could sit on his lap again because he was cold we were in his house he was not cold um he just wanted me to sit on his lap and i asked him because i didn't feel right i was like when i was on his lap i was like are you taken and he's like what are you talking about and I'm like, aren't you dating someone? He's like, if I were dating someone, don't you think I'd be loyal? He's like, do you think I'm unloyal? And I was like, well, I know nothing about you. I, I don't know. And he's like, I don't have a girlfriend. And I, by the way, he wasn't lying. This will make sense later in the story, but he wasn't lying. He actually was single at this time. So... He decided to start walking us home because it was getting dark and his dad was going to get home soon. His dad didn't like visitors that he didn't know were going to be there being there. So he was walking us home. And he felt bad about um, something. And I was like, is there anything that I can do to cheer you up? Obviously asking that famous question that you get in a lot of like things or whatever. Is there anything I can do? And he was like, well, there is one thing. And he told Brayden to go ahead and meet us on the trail as a point that we could meet up again. So Brayden was like conscious enough to know how to do that. Like he was functioning. So he, he went there and uh, Apricot saw this lit up arch in somebody's front yard. Literally. And he, we went under the arch and I still didn't know what was happening. Me, this, uh, this naive little chipmunk did not know what he wanted. And he looks down at me. He's like, I've been waiting to ask this for a while. Like since I met you the whole three days we had known each other. And he said, can I kiss you? <laughs> and I said, yes. And let me tell you, this boy is a fantastic kisser. Anyway. Um, so on that Monday, he decided, he was like, we kissed a whole three times, including that one under the arch, because we just liked kissing each other. But we were talking about like how he was going to be in the same classes because in the middle of the year in our school, they would change like one class, depending on what quarter you were in, there were four and so like we were ch I was changing to psychology and he happened to be in that class too so he was gonna have the same lunch and we were talking about how we'd like sit with each other see each other stuff like that so I was telling the story of what happened with apricot and I because Brayden wanted to know and he was so out of it yesterday so I told him about like the kissing and what had happened and he didn't show any emotion to me when I was telling him so I was just like okay, you wanted us together and now you're not showing any emotion. Maybe he was just having a bad day or something. So I went to Miranda, started telling her, and she told me, did you realize what just happened? I turned around and Brayden wasn't there and Brayden always stands there. So I was like, where? She had told me that Brayden stomped away angry when I told her the story about what happened with Apricot. So he was really upset. Um... So the next day that I hung out with Apricot is the day I started dating him, January 24th, 2018. So um, we were walking to his house and over text Cupcake was fighting with me. I'll put the receipt video down below because that's the one where you'll hear that. But he was fighting with me and Apricot was getting so pissed off and was like, tell him off. Come on, like you don't need him anymore. Let him know that you're better off without him. Like tell him off. And so I did. And even Apricot took my phone and said a few choice words. Um, so we decided to cuddle with each other while watching The Godfather, one of those movies. And he... I'd taken his shirt off because it was really hot and we were cuddling like that. He heard the door start to open and his father coming in. So it's really funny how this happened. If you imagine it, we got out of a cuddle position, put the blanket over my lap. We jumped to opposite sides of the couch and he put his shirt back on all in a span of like five seconds. It's really, really funny. It's really, really funny. Y'all do that. So... 
so basically back to my story so we did that <laughs> and story. he was like hey i'm gonna like walk her home yeah. and then his dad said hit <laughs> and then his dad said um it, it was like i'm gonna go walk her home and his dad's like no you're not and apricot's like what and his dad's like you're not leaving this house you're grounded so he was grounded for the alcohol bottle he had in his room. So his his dad was like, yeah, you're not leaving. So he gave me his biggest, fluffiest sweater and told me how to walk home. And he made sure the hood was up and I had a scarf and he gave me gloves and a hat to make sure that I was bundled up. Because he's like, I don't want you to freeze. So at least he did care enough to make sure I was bundled up. And then I had to give him the stuff back the next day. But, you know, that's just. But D minus parenting. Yeah, F parenting. Anyway, so uh, when we were in the same class together, I sat next to this other girl. And I'm not going to say her name, but she was chill. Um, if you were next to me in psychology, you know who you are. Love you. Um, she was a big part of it, kind of, just seeing what happened in class. And mm -hmm. she can attest to this. Um, during class, he, like, sat next to me. Okay, so it cut me off, but what I was saying is the girl in the class can attest to this happening. But basically, he would keep taking this beanie that I wore and, like, wearing it and, like, keeping it for the rest of the class type of thing to mess with me. Also, so, at the end of one of the classes, we weren't dating, by the way, I want to preface this, this is kind of before we dated, kind of afterthought thing is that he kissed me goodbye before going to his next class. And one of my friends in that class, he said, oh, you and your boyfriend are cute. And I look back at him and I'm like, well, we're not actually together. So that kind of confused my friend. And if he's watching this, I'm sorry for confusing you. But yeah, so that was a kind of a before we dated thing. Um, he would just keep kissing me then when we dated so that we were like, we shouldn't confuse people anymore type thing. So then he would talk to me before rehearsal started because Miss Gill would kick people out when they had to do the stuff because that was the Shout theater teacher Ms. or whatever. <laughs> so yeah, he would hey, talk to me and that'll be kind of in the memos, but him and Carrot would have spats back and forth. She's like, I don't like you. And he's like, well, I don't like you either. And like they'd have spats back and forth and stuff like that. And like we just kind of talked because that's what, you know, a boyfriend would do, talk to you before you had rehearsal and things like that. Then... So this is kind of, this sounds savage the way I'm going to say it, but he um, broke up with me uh, like the first week of February or like the, one of the first days of February. It was like a Friday. So it was like February 4th or something like that. He broke up with me. I'll have it in the memos when I do that. But like he broke up with me and we decided to stay friends or whatever. We had one last kiss and one last hug and he walked me up. We would always meet in the vending machines in front of the auditorium. So after meeting at those vending machines, I had to do rehearsal up in the music room. So he walked me there as kind of like a sending me off goodbye thing. And then I found out on Valentine's Day, like a week after he had broken up with me, on Valentine's Day he had a rose and he had gotten back with his ex after he had broken up with me. So I was kind of like, why are you back with your ex or whatever? So then... Brayden came to me a while after when um, Apricot kind of had a sick hold on me. You'll see that through the memos and stuff, and I'll explain it more in the advice. But he um, told me that he knew this when the relationship was going on, but didn't tell me that he knew that Apricot was cheating on me, but decided not to tell me until like way after. And I was like, why didn't you tell me this? I don't know how many people it was with. And also, I don't want to say that specifics because that's slander. And I don't want to slander him because I still am good friends with this guy. You'll see why we became friends because of how we patched all that up. That'll be in the receipts. And then it just leaves the friendship stuff from texts and memos, which is the next. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, you can thumbs up this video. It was pretty lighthearted. Uh, if you want to subscribe, like you like my vibe, what I'm trying to do, make the world a better place, you can subscribe. Um, yeah, and uh, make sure to hit that bell if you do, because YouTube is bad with notifying when I put up a video. So please do that. Wednesdays are my serious series videos, but then Saturday I lighten it up with usually video reactions because they're easy to, you know, video reactions, tags, challenges, whatever. So 
um yeah so you'll get to see some of my friends and some of my family members on my channel so i hope you enjoyed this video and um there's tori and so yeah subscribe if you want to hit the bell like this video share it if you want to share it with somebody who needs to hear it i don't know um and i was talking kind of fast because my phone was mad and cut me off last time because they're like you're talking too much so <laughs> that's why i'm trying to get through this video but if you want to like put it if you want to download this video and put it in a thing and slow it down so you can understand what i say better or if you want me i'll probably put up captions so that you can keep up with what i'm saying if i'm going too fast for some of you so just want to let you know that but i wanted to get this out before my phone cuts me off and i didn't know when that would be so i love you guys so much thanks for supporting my channel thanks for sticking with me even though i'm, I'm an annoying human being Thank you for dealing with all the crap I put up with because I hope some of these videos could help you. And if they have, please actually subscribe because, like, I'm going to be making more relatable things like bullying and stuff. So, like, these will really help you because they're actually helping me get over these relationships that I already didn't know that I didn't get over. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, bye.